right, in this video we'll go through the anatomy for respiration and phonation. So for respiration to occur, we have to have innervation from the medulla oblongata. This provides the um, not involuntary reflex of breathing. So we don't have to tell ourselves to breathe. Our medulla oblongata really gives us that signal for inhalation and exhalation. And during phonation, it coordinates with the phonatory nerves and signals so that it can prolong the expiratory process or prolong the inspiratory process to support our phonatory needs. We also have 12 pairs of ribs that create the cylinder-like structure of the thoracic cavity. So the thoracic cavity is just the chest cavity, and we have the ribs on either side creating this uh, cylinder structure. And in between each rib, we have the intercostal muscles. There are two types of intercostal muscles, the external and internal intercostals. We'll talk about their function in just a minute. But they attach to each of the 12 ribs on each side of the rib cage to help expand or relax the rib cage. We have the lungs, which are housed within the thoracic cavity. The lungs are not a muscle. They're simply a cavity to store the oxygen and uh, filter it for distribution throughout the body. Now the diaphragm flows, uh, lies at the bottom of the thoracic cavity, and it is a muscle. This muscle uh, pulls down when it contracts to expand the thoracic cavity and the uh, thoracic volume, and then relaxes back to its natural position during uh, exhalation. The tracheal larynx, pharynx, nose, and mouth are just a passage for air to flow in and out of. They also contain uh, cilia that can filter that air as it passes through the structures before it gets to the lungs. The phonatory anatomy is specifically uh, among the larynx. So if we look at the larynx, it's housed in the front of the throat. If you put your hand just below your chin, you'll feel a bump. That's the thyroid notch. It's not the hyoid bone. If you swallow, you'll feel that knot rise and fall, and that's what's carrying the larynx to lift and close it during swallowing to keep the airway protected. If you place your hand just gently on the front of your throat, you'll uh, also feel vibrations on your throat while you voice. So if you just hold out, ah, you'll hear those vibrations happen. If you just exhale air for the sound uh, that's produced when you say H, so you won't feel those vibrations, and that's because the vocal folds are not vibrating. They're not uh, brought together or adducted together to vibrate for phonation. So if we kind of extract the larynx from the throat, this is what it looks like from the front. We have the hyoid bone here at the top. We have the thyroid notch here. This gray area is the thyroid cartilage, and it sits up on top of the trachea. So the trachea is here, and what you see in gray are the tracheal rings. We also can see the cricoid cartilage here, and we'll talk about these different areas in just a moment, as well as some of the muscles. In order to view the vocal folds, we actually have to go through the mouth or the nose, down the pharynx, and towards the larynx to take a look at the vocal folds. And what that looks like is this picture here on the right from above. So again, we have the picture here from the front. In this picture, we have a picture of the larynx from above. What we see here are just the general tissues, because this is a cartoon, it's not very specific. But what I want you to focus on is just this white band on either side. These are the vocal cords. And you might also hear me refer to them as vocal folds. Those terms are interchangeable. In this position, the vocal folds are open or abducted, and that's A-B-D, abducted. And you can see the trachea while the vocal folds are abducted. In this picture on the right, you can see that the vocal folds are closed, or brought together, and this is known as adducted, A-D-D. And you can remember adducted because it's bringing things together, or adding them together. And we cannot see the trachea while the vocal folds are closed. The vocal folds are closed during swallowing, again, to protect the airway. And they're closed during phonation so that the air can flow through and vibrate. All right, so there are two things that you really need to know for phonation. Or anatomy. We have the vagus nerve that supplies the efferent and afferent signals to the larynx. There are uh, multiple branches of the vagus nerve because it is the wandering nerve. But the recurrent and superior laryngeal nerve provide innervation to the larynx for the motor signals that tell the muscles to close for phonation. 
Uh, the recurrent nerve provides most of the signals. The superior nerve uh, really provides just one of the muscles. Um, but what I want you to know is just that the vagus nerve innervates the larynx. Now the larynx, or the voice box, is made up of cartilage uh, and muscles and mucosa. So what you'll see here all to the right is the larynx. It starts up here at the top with the epiglottis. And remember again that the epiglottis is primarily for swallowing. It doesn't really have a phonation uh, function. And that's because the larynx is primarily designed for airway protection during swallowing. So it's a little redundant for voicing. Uh, down below we have the thyroid cartilage. This is that uh, lighter area here, and underneath we have the cricoid cartilage, and we'll learn about the different uh, portions of that in just a moment. The larynx just sits on top of the trachea here at the bottom, and when we talk about uh, the different areas of the larynx, we have the glottis, which is again just that space between the vocal folds. We have the subglottis, which is just the area below the vocal folds or below the glottis, and the supraglottis, which is the area above the glottis. Now the cartilage is connective tissue that provides structural support for the muscles. So if we look at this picture here on the left, this is a picture of the larynx from the front. So we have the thyroid cartilage again here in the front, creating the front and the sides of the larynx. And then underneath we have the cricoid cartilage highlighted in yellow. And those are the only two cartilages we can see from the front of the larynx. If we rotate the larynx around to the back and split it in half, we can see the additional structures. So here at the top we have the epiglottis, which is a cartilage, but again, it's not used for voicing. And so it doesn't have any uh, vocal fold muscles or laryngeal muscles attached to it for voicing. So what we'll focus on again is the thyroid cartilage. So in red here, this is the back of the thyroid cartilage. This is the back of the cricoid cartilage. And right here in the blue, we have the arytenoid cartilage, and this is what the vocal folds attach to, and what helps uh, open and close the vocal folds for phonation. So when we talk about the muscles that insert and attach, it, the muscles are named according to the, uh, the cartilage that they insert and attach to. So the thyroarytenoid muscle inserts at the thyroid and attaches to the arytenoid. The cricoid has the cricothyroid that uh, inserts at the cricoid and attaches to the thyroid. We have the lateral cricoarytenoid, which is the muscle that attaches to the cricoid and uh, or inserts at the cricoid and attaches at the arytenoid. And lateral just means that it's on the side of the larynx. And then we have the posterior cricoarytenoid, and this is the muscle that attaches to the crico cricoid and arytenoid in the back of the larynx. And then finally we have the arytenoid muscle, um, or the arytenoid attachment known as the interarytenoids. These are actually two different types of muscles. The lateral, uh, I'm sorry, the oblique and transverse arytenoid muscles, but you don't have to know those necessarily for this class. When we're learning the different functions of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, it really helps to know how they're attaching to understand how it works. So if we're looking at this picture again, we have the thyroid cartilage here in the front, we have the arytenoids here in the back, and the cricoid in the very back. And this is an image of the larynx from above if we're looking through the nose, down the pharynx, at the top of the larynx. And we've taken away all of the mucosa. So the thyroarytenoid is really the body of the vocal folds, and it attaches to the thyroid here in the front and the arytenoid here in the back. The arytenoids move kind of in a uh, rotation movement, and so they can rotate backwards to the back of the larynx, lengthening that thyroarytenoid. Or they can rotate forward and relax that thyroarytenoid. So if we pull the arytenoid back, it's going to tense the vocal folds. If we push the arytenoid forward, it's going to relax and increase the mass of the vocal folds. They're also helpful for adduction or closure of the vocal folds, and that is its primary role. The lateral cricoarytenoid is here on the sides, so this is the, uh, kind of difficult way to see it, but uh, right
right here we have the cricoid cartilage and so this muscle actually kind of goes from the top to the bottom. I don't want you to think that it's attaching to the thyroid cartilage here. It's attaching uh, below to the cricoid cartilage and it helps close the vocal folds as well. We have the posterior cricoarytenoid which is here in the back. So we have the back of the arytenoid attaching to the kind of top of the cricoid cartilage in the back of the larynx. And it's also going to, or it's the uh, lone abductor, so it's the only one that opens the vocal folds. And we have the interarytenoids, which attaches to each side of the arytenoids. So we have an attachment on this arytenoid, an attachment on the uh, right arytenoid, and it will uh, help close the vocal folds. And then we have the cricothyroid, and we can't actually see the cricothyroid from the top of the larynx. We have to go to the side, and so that's what this image is here. This is, again, the thyroid cartilage. This is the arytenoid, and this is the cricoid cartilage, and they've split the thyroid in half. And it attaches uh, to the bottom of the thyroid cartilage and the top of the cricoid cartilage, and it works to rock the larynx forward, and it helps with lengthening and tensing of the vocal folds. Okay, so now we can look at what the real vocal folds look like. This is, again, an image through the nose, through the pharynx, to look at the top of the vocal folds um, and the top of the larynx. So I'll orient you, this is the front of the larynx. So if you were just placing your hand on the front of your throat, you would be touching just in front of this area. This is the back of the vocal folds. And here, this kind of lumpy area is the uh, arytenoids on either side. We have the vocal folds here, this thin band of tissue. And then we have the false vocal folds just that sit right above that. And again, those are really more important for swallowing. And sometimes they have a function in voicing, but more so in a dysfunctional voice. And then if the vocal folds are open, we can see the trachea. So this is that old picture that you've seen before where the vocal folds are open. And we can see the trachea and where they're closed.